Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And real quick before we get started today, I just wanted to let everyone know if you've sent me an email, I haven't been able to get into my channel account for the last couple days. I sent Google a message on my other account, so hopefully that'll get worked out. This isn't the first time that's happened, but so I do apologize. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if anyone has been uh, submitting their name for the uh, giveaway, I have been recording all the names, even if I don't reply back to your comments, so not to worry there either. So today's case takes us back to California in the El Dorado National Forest, more specifically the Ice House Reservoir. These friends were staying at the Ice House Campground, which is located right on a lake, and it's there's a boat ramp, and it's in the Crystal Basin area of the El Dorado National Forest, and this area is really popular for hikers and boaters and campers and everyone, because it's just a beautiful area. I actually am familiar with this area, and it's east of Sacramento and south of Lake Tahoe and it's just a gorgeous area and I really wanted to get down to this area this past summer to look into some of these cases so next year when I go back to west I'm definitely going to be researching and trying to retrace this case as well and today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Saeed Ahmadi and I'm pretty sure I'm check saying that right I checked with several different people and Saeed is roughly six foot two inches tall. He's roughly 190 pounds. He's got grayish hair with brown eyes, and he was last seen wearing a hat, headphones, a button down shirt, shorts, and a pair of tennis shoes. And oddly enough, none of these items have been found, but we're going to talk more about this case. So they were camping at the El Dorado National Forest at this reservoir. And everything was going fine. You know, they were just enjoying their time. It was summertime. This happened on July 8th of 2020. And this area is very popular. So there's tons of people around, you know, lots of people hiking and camping and boating. Well, this one day they decided that they were going to take a walk up to Strawberry Point. Now I'm going to have a map up. So what they did was they walked along the reservoir up to um, basically where Strawberry Point is. And then Saeed apparently said that he wanted to get a better view. So he decided that he was going to cross the Silver Creek South Fork. And this is where problems started because apparently this is where he got separated from his uh, companions. Now I'm not sure exactly how that happened, whether it was just that he wanted to cross this creek and the others didn't. But according to the El Dorado County Sheriff's Office, at roughly 3.30 p.m. on July 8th, after he got separated from his friends, he called them and he said that he was on a hill near a road, that the lake was below him and he could see it, and he was lost. Now, the friends at this point, they just, they hung up with him and they called the park rangers right away, which I guess was a smart idea, but I'm not sure why they hit the panic button right away, especially since he was near a road. You'd think that he'd be able to follow that out, but again, we'll discuss that further. But that phone call was the last that anyone heard from Saeed. He was 66 years old at the time of his disappearance and was in good physical condition. And apparently he had this attitude that he never gave up, so he was always up for a challenge. However, according to his friends and family, he was not familiar with the heavily wooded areas. And it would have been easy, I guess, for him to get disoriented. And it's also noteworthy that he was, he is a diabetic and it's assumed that he didn't have his you know medication on him for just this short hike which they assumed they'd be back in maybe an hour or so the search got started almost immediately and roughly a hundred volunteers and officers combed all the trails in and around the reservoir and the campground that they were staying at and at first they thought they would probably find him because the guy had called his friend so he was obviously in an area that had cell service and he said that he was near a road, so they thought, okay, well, he'll probably just follow the road down. Now, I don't know by his description whether it was that he could see the road, because, you know, sometimes you're out in the woods, you can see a road off in the distance. But I'm going to show a map of Strawberry Point, and there is a road that runs up past it. And I'm not sure, too, if he had just crossed the creek, why he couldn't just follow that back down. So it's a little confusing, um, you know, and it's also not sure how high the water was at that time. I know that creek crossings can be the most dangerous part of hiking these types of hikes. 
but I was out west in California, not too far away from this area in 2020, and it was a very low snow year that year, so the creeks were very dry compared to what they normally are. So it's hard to say what happened here, if he tried going back across the creek or, or what. It's also confusing as to why, you know, his, he couldn't make any more phone calls. I mean, he made the one phone call and according to his family members, you know, he just said that he was lost. He gave his, what he could describe as his description, the area. Why after that couldn't he make any other calls? Did he suffer an injury? Did something happen to him? It's just a very, very bizarre disappearance, especially because this search effort was massive. Over 19 different agencies were involved in the search, including the National Guard, California Highway Patrol. Now, they did come up with one very good clue. I'm not sure which part of the search they found this, but they found a footprint. And his family members, they, they were so smart to think about this because they knew that their dad bought everything at Costco. So they got in touch with Costco and they got information about the shoes that he was probably wearing. And then they sent a mold or an image to the search and rescue guys. And the search and rescue guys were able to match it up to what the description was and the size that he wore. So, you know, those are pretty good odds. Now I'm sure that, you know, other people buy shoes from Costco, but you know, that's pretty good odds for being in that area. And then they found further footprints However, even though this was a great lead, it didn't lead them to anything. But the footprints were located on Granite Springs Road, which is about a mile away from Strawberry Point. Just a clarification, they weren't found on the actual road, they were found near the road. And this is one thing that I want to look at when I go out there and look at this case, because I found this road, but it, as re it was reported in the news that it was roughly a mile away from Strawberry Point. But unless the road goes up further, my calculations, it looks like it's over five miles away, but either way, it's a good distance away from where he was last thought to be. And in that section, he passes a lot of different roads and a lot of different landmarks that you think he would have been able to find his way out. Now, that's assuming that something hadn't happened. He could have gone into some kind of diabetic shock. You know, sometimes people get overexerted and those things come on more heavily than they normally would have. So it's really hard to say, but this search effort, like I said, was huge. They had drone teams. They had several different helicopters from, you know, the Highway Patrol, the National Guard, and they just kept going out with ground searches and they covered an enormous area and they didn't find anything. They didn't find his headphones. They didn't ha find his hat. And that to me is just crazy because the area where they were, were is a very highly trafficked area. Now, granted, this is summertime, so you have to remember that there is huge amounts of floral and fauna and everything is in full bloom, so there's a lot more things to cover up, you know, possible things that he may have dropped. I don't know, in this particular case, just based on what we know, the circumstances, this case didn't get a lot of media coverage and that's why I really wanted to cover it because it is just so baffling and it really does seem like he just vanished into thin air because he had a cell phone. He was able to communicate with people and then all of a sudden after that communication, it was just like he was gone. I mean, how does that happen? Now, like I said, it's possible he was 66 years old, so it's possible that something happened. Maybe he overexerted himself, but According to his friends and family, he was a tough guy. He had this go-getter attitude that he would never give up, never quit. So what happened on this beautiful July afternoon? Let's just look at the timeline again because I really would like your guys' help on this case. So here is where they first camped. They, he was with one friend, I guess, the first night, and they camped out on the Ice House Reservoir campground. Then the following day, I guess he was with a different friend at this point, and they decided because he wanted to see a better view. So they followed the reservoir up and around up to Strawberry Point. And after they got there, Saeed said that he wanted to get a better view. Why his friend didn't go with him at this time, I have no idea, but he just decided to cross over the South Fork of the Silver Creek. He got across the creek and at some point he became disoriented, but he was still well with all enough to know that he was disoriented. He called his friend, he said, look, I can see the road, I can see the lake, but I'm just not really sure how to get back down. And that's it. That was the last we ever heard from him. And despite search and rescue knowing basically a very good general area of where he last was and an extensive search over weeks with 
almost two dozen different agencies involved land air drones everything you can think of they didn't find anything now they did find those footprints but unfortunately those footprints didn't lead anything to anything and really they just made things even more confusing at least in my opinion i would definitely like to hear your guys' thoughts on this case and give me any input that you may have because this is definitely on my list of cases to cover and follow up when i go out west next year to you know just retrace the steps and just see if i can get a better handle on what actually happened. I'd like to dedicate this video to Saeed Ahmadi, his family, his friends, all the search and rescue that worked so hard to try and bring him home, and everyone that's still trying to work hard to bring him home, and my thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family and just hoping that he can be brought home soon, one way or another. I want to thank everybody for watching, as always, and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Remember this is someone's family member that they're desperately looking for answers for. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music, and I will see everyone in the next one. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I decided at some at the end of the videos, instead of the destination points, I'll just leave some safety tips. Because I think they are very important, especially like when you're hiking alone. And in these particular cases, I really think that carrying a fanny pack is a great thing because a lot of people tend to take their pack off when they go to use the bathroom or if they just think they're just going to go for a short little hike. This way you always have something with you. You can stash an emergency blanket in there, some extra water purifying tablets or aquamarina drops. These are all things that can really help aid in survival if you do end up getting lost. Also, possibly I would carry my GPS device in there. Just anything you can to help, you know, maybe some snacks. These things can all help you, uh, you know, survive if you do end up getting separated from your pack. All right, guys, I'll see everyone in the next one. Take care.